In this video, I'm gonna to react to how each NHL team got its name. and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. Now, this is gonna be really interesting because I've really been learning a ton about the NHL since I started reacting to it maybe around five months ago. So pretty much when I started this channel about five, six months ago. And it is such, honestly, I think the NHL is such an awesome underrated sport here in Europe. I genuinely feel like with the way the world is going with the, you know, how cultures are, are sharing stuff and, you know, soccer's becoming big in North America, I think inevitably the NHL is gonna get bigger over here. Uh, the NHL uh, history is really, really interesting. Last week I reacted to uh, the NHL rivalry between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Philadelphia Flyers. And just learning about the history of, the, of those teams and their rivalry was awesome. Awesome, but it made me think, you know, so why are they called the Penguins? Why are they called the Flyers? You know, like, what was it? Was this, was it a random thing? Or is there a reason behind, you know, choosing that name? Because obviously your name is massively important to you as a sports team. It's your brand, it's what you build, your whole image, your logo, your whole, the way you do things, the way your uniforms look. Everything you are as a brand, as a team, is pretty much based on your name. So I knew I had to uh, watch a video like this. So let's go. This is gonna be me reacting to how each NHL team got its name. Let's do it. Identity, the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Everyone has one, and so do the teams that we choose to represent. But behind every logo and every name lies a story, a reason why that team has the identity that it does today. Exactly. There is a reason behind, you know, everything, every name, so important. In this video, I'm going to attempt to uncover how each and every NHL team got its name and identity. And with that, here's how all current 31 teams came to bear their names they have today. So if you were a 90s kid like me, you probably remember watching the Mighty Ducks movies. Hmm. And it's pretty remarkable. I never saw the Mighty Ducks. Is it, is it something worth me watching as a, you know, no longer a kid, probably, right? Let me know in the comment section. To consider the fact that this trilogy of movies was such a big hit, beginning with the first that was released in 1992. The NHL saw so much promise in capitalizing on the movie's popularity that it decided to award Disney a franchise the year after the Mighty Ducks came to the big screen, which ensured that the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim would embody an identity first captured in Hollywood. How ironic. Anyways, after Disney decided to part ways with their ice escapades, the team shortened their name to the Anaheim Ducks and adopted a new logo, but thankfully still gives us a glimpse of nostalgia from time to time with their third jerseys. That was pretty cool. I'd had no idea that Disney owned a team. Huh. Formerly known as the Phoenix Coyotes until 2014, the Arizona Coyotes are a product of a team that once played in the capital of Manitoba. The team name itself was given following a naming contest. The other runner-up candidate was Scorpions, as both represent inhabitants of the surrounding Sonoran Desert. Upon their debut in 1996, the Coyotes embraced their newly found identity, while giving it its notable southwestern flavor. Their first logo, a Kachina-style coyote, is arguably the most unique in league history. And besides their logo, their jerseys were also far from traditional, featuring mm. a- Wow, they, they kind of look almost uh, Native American-esque. I think they look really cool. Kachina style trim to match the logo with black as the primary color with green and burgundy in the trim. This one here is awesome. This is like really cool. Almost simultaneously while relocating to the newly finished arena that the team plays in today in Glendale for the start of the 2003-2004 season, the team had adopted an entirely new color scheme and logo. The look was more simplistic and featured a howling coyote with Sedona red, white, and black. Hmm. 
I don't know. I kind of preferred the retro one. I, I reckon one of those retro black uh, shirts would cost a fortune, right? Advertising. We're all sick of it today, really. Ads are plastered, it seems, everywhere we look. But in the days of the 1920s, before TV screens and cell phones, you had to get creative. And that's exactly what Bruins founder and owner at the time, Charles Adams, did. Adams happened to not only be the franchise owner of the newest team in Boston, but also the owner of a local supermarket chain, which shared the exact same color scheme. Anyways, how they got their colors may not seem interesting, but how they gained their name just may be. As the Bruins were given their name by a guy you might have heard of, Art Ross. Ring any bells? Ross entertained the idea. I'm ashamed to say I don't know. Idea of the old English word for bear while intending on the untamed, agile, and cunning nature to represent the club. Mmm, okay. Similarly to Boston, the Sabres are one of the few teams not to gain their logo or identity from their city or surrounding area. As the Knox brothers, Seymour and Northrop, who were the ones who initially brought Buffalo its NHL team, decided that a naming contest that took place in 1970 would be the best option for obtaining a name, then ultimately deciding on Sabres being the most unique and suitable. As Seymour felt it was a prime example of swiftness while strong on both offense and defense. That, I like that. There's just... So... Hold on. So... Uh, <laughs> why is this not... Like, this C here. I know it's pretty simplistic, but it's so effective. Like, this flaming C. I like it. So, um, imagine being named after a mass tragedy. One that claimed... Was it? Oh my god. In the lives of several and a city. Cause it doesn't get much more morbid than that. Oh my but you god. have to admit, the name and logo are pretty cool nonetheless. Anyways, besides the uniqueness in the name origin, the flames also similarly to the Dallas Stars gained their original identity from somewhere else. As the Flames also played in Atlanta from 1972 to 1980, and carry with them, as I mentioned, the memory of tragedy. After a Civil War campaign, Sherman's march to sea swept through much of Georgia, fire did as well, setting much of the state, including the city of Atlanta. I've seen this man, like in, um, so a, a few of my, I think maybe one of my subscribers has him as his uh, display picture, I'd love, I'd love to know, like, who this man is. Like, must be pretty important, right? He swept through much of Georgia, fire did as well, setting much of the state, including the city of Atlanta, ablaze. Instead of bearing the A on their chest as a primary logo, players now instead just skipped a letter and settled on C. You know, for Calgary. But even still, the team hasn't forgotten their roots, as the assistant captains represent with the A logo stitched on their sweaters. Hmm, so I wonder where the name Hurricane came from. Oh yeah, cause North Carolina seems to get consistently battered with nature's liquid fury. In 1997, after it was decided that the Hartford Whalers would move to Raleigh, the team's owner, Peter Carmanos Jr., chose the name because I feel like it's blatantly obvious at this point. While the previous Whaler's color scheme was dropped of blue, green, and silver, the new black and red combination was chosen to match the North Carolina State University Wolfpack. Anyways, the Canes not only bear the name of the storm, but also in part literally take warning, as their slogan says, as the Carolina secondary logo is the U.S. Maritime warning flag, the one wow. used to indicate a storm warning. That is pretty cool though. I like it. I like the kit. Mm -hmm. And yet another war reference came with the Chicago Blackhawks being named after World War I veteran and original Blackhawks owner Major Fred McLaughlin became nostalgic while deciding on names and decided to name his team after the 86th Infantry Division, also known as the Blackhawk Division. And in 1926, officially named- Wow, look at this. This retro footage, man. Named his team the Blackhawks. 
with a space between the two words. And it wasn't until the 1980s that the words became one. While the name was Frederick McLaughlin's doing, his wife Irene was the one who designed the original team logo. Wow. Even though it's gone through many changes and adjustments, this logo arguably is the most vibrant and eye-catching in the world of sports today. I do like it. Very eye-catching. Ooh, this is nice as well though. This is very nice. Previously known as the Quebec Nordiques, the Avalanche got their name Great in 1995 goal. as the obvious choice the Rockies by that time was taken by the local MLB team. So they decided to take the second most obvious option, the Avalanche, because what happens when there's tons of snow-covered mountains around? You guessed it. <laughs> Anyways, the team's logo is a letter A that's in the shape of a letter C. The secondary logo from 1995 to 2015 was a foot. And even more ironically, Adam Foot and Alexander Kerfoot both played for the team. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that found that funny. Even still, the logo... <laughs> that was pretty funny as you probably know, was made to represent Bigfoot. Replacing the shoulder patch today is an insignia of the Colorado State flag with the Avs colors. Mm. And just when you thought the war theme was over, think again, as we have yet another war represented league-wide by the Columbus Blue Jackets. After a Name the Team contest was held, creative, I know, the name Blue Jackets ended up being the winner. The name the is in Jackets. reference to the Civil War, due to the fact that Ohio and Columbus both have a rich history when it comes to Union troops being present, as the state of Ohio contributed more residents from the Union side of the war than any other state. The logo coincides with the patriotic feel displaying a star with the state flag wrapped around it mm. in a C shape. One unique part of Nationwide Arena that definitely sets it apart. Oh wow, they've got uh, old cannons as well. I love these things. Maybe because uh, Arsenal, my, my football club, has a, a cannon as its logo too. From others in the league is the cannon. Yes, I said it. A cannon. A handmade replica of the 1857 Napoleon-style cannon is fired on three occasions. When the team first takes the ice, when they score, and when they win. And trust me, if you're there, you won't miss it, cause that baby is loud. Just yeah. ask Johnny Gaudreau. <laughs> Did he just flinch? As I mentioned before, similarly to the Flames, the Stars have also inherited much of their identity from a former team, the Minnesota North Stars. As the North Stars moved south in 1993, they simply dropped part of their name and were renamed the Stars. And honestly, it couldn't have worked out any better, as Texas, in case you don't know, is known as, as the Lone Star, Star State. Yeah, the team Star. initially debuted with its former colors and logo a season after their debut, though, we saw a darker shade of green that was visible in their jerseys. Yeah, I've said this before, I'll say it again. The Stanley Cup is the best looking trophy in all of sports. Just look at the size of this thing, man. It's humongous. And I think, is that, uh, are these the names of the, the players etched into it? Or is it the past teams that have won? Let me know, but either way, amazing trophy. They say don't mess with a good thing. And that's exactly what the Wings haven't done for the most part while considering their logo and jersey design over the years. Since the 1930s, the team has adorned the same winged wheel logo, only modifying later by dropping Detroit from their jerseys. But even though their logo and jersey designs haven't strayed far from the original, their name has. After being founded as an original six team in 1926, they were first known as the Detroit Cougars. And then, in 1930, the Falcons, for a couple seasons, before finally settling on Red Wings in 1932. Uh, so they also later around. on adopted one of the most peculiar traditions in the NHL today. Beginning in 1952, after an owner of a local fish market, Peter Cusimano, woke up one day and decided to throw an octopus on the ice, you know, during a postseason game. Random. What? I know. But regardless, the tradition's still going strong in the Motor City. Well, sort of. As it's octopus slinging today, instead of throwing. During the postseason, anyways. <laughs> An octopus. The Oilers. It just seemed like logic, really, but 
It was actually fate. After Bill Hunter founded the franchise in 1972, he decided to stick to familiarity. As the junior team he had previously owned, called the Oil Kings, went by the nickname Oilers. But mm. similarly to the Coyotes... Man, look at how packed this rink is. Like, what what kind of attendances do uh, NHL games get? From uh, this, this to me looks like at least 15,000, 20,000? they underwent a name change. After joining the NHL in 1979 as part of the WHA merger, the Alberta Oilers then adopted the name that they have today. Great finish. Ah, Blockbuster. A 90s staple that will forever be remembered for its awesome candy and endless selection of- Oh man, Blockbuster was awesome. We had it here as well. When I think Blockbuster, yeah, I just think of childhood, man. Just going getting a, an old VHS tape. Those were the days. Movies actually has something in common with this Floridian franchise. Its first owner, Wayne Huizenga, just so happened to be the co-owner at the time of Blockbuster Video. About a year after being awarded a team, it was announced in 1993 that the official name of the Miami-based NHL team would be the Florida Panthers. Mm. After, you guessed it, Panthers that live in Florida. And while the name choice and identity are pretty explainable, a well-known team tradition isn't. At least, at first glance anyway. Known as the Rat Trick, fans what? since the playoffs of 96 have been throwing plastic rats on the ice during or near the postseason. What? The tradition began after Scott Mellenby killed a rat with his stick pre-game and then ended up scoring two goals soon after. Even more uh... interestingly, in 1996, when the tradition began, it was also the year of the rats, and also the same year that the Panthers went on to the Stanley Cup Finals. <laughs> but who's going to clean off all those rats? <laughs> The Kings ultimately received their identity through a, you guessed it, team naming contest. After receiving the team, which was one of six products of the 1967 expansion, Jack Cook wanted a name that asserted royalty. The team not only embodied royalty by their name, but also debuting colors. As the Kings began the inaugural season wearing foreign blue and gold. Around the time when Gretzky arrived in the City of Angels, the team switched to a gray and black color scheme, but abandoned it for the start of the 98-99 season because subliminally representing a gang is kinda bad. <laughs> uh. It's after true. being founded in June of 1997, around four years after the North Stars left the state of hockey, the Wild wouldn't play their first game until the start of the millennium in 2000. Their identity would come one year after the team's founding and six possibilities came to the forefront, including Blue Ox, Northern Lights, Voyagers, White Bears, Freeze, and Wild. As we all know, the latter is the name they go by today which pays homage to the state's wildlife and outdoors reputation. The logo itself, which is my personal favorite, depicts a silhouette of a wild animal and four- That is pretty cool. And a full moon as well, with trees in there, the silhouette. That is pretty- I have to say, I'm, I've been impressed with quite a few of the logos in the NHL. Really creative landscape simultaneously. The eye of the animal itself pays tribute to the North Stars as well as the state's motto, which I won't attempt to say authentically, but in translation it means Star of the North. Mm. Yeah that was really really interesting, like a lot of really nice logos, really nice looking original logos if i had to pick my favorite just from recent like what i can uh, remember in my mind i'd have to go with the uh, the calgary flames there was something about that flaming sea it was minimalist yet striking eye-catching i like the colors that were used really really cool and also know like learning about the history behind uh, these uh, the names what was really fascinating too like the one with the rat and the octopus <laughs> that that was really really bizarre but obviously you know 
if it brings teams good luck or if the fans think it's going to bring teams good luck sometimes that positive energy can definitely uh, manifest itself but yeah i really really enjoyed this one i'm definitely going to put part two on my list thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe turn on bell notifications and keep throwing the recommendations my way i know i say it all the time but they genuinely help me out because if i know you enjoyed watching something i'll definitely enjoy reacting to it so like subscribe turn on bell notifications Keep throwing the recommendations and I'll catch you in the next one.